Welcome to Food for Health. My name is Cheryl McWilliams. I'm a wellness specialist here at Midcoast Parkview Health. I enjoy lots of things, but this is one of the things that I enjoy the most, talking with people about their health and how to make good choices to either retain or regain life and function and health. So this evening, I have my trusty helper with me. This is my daughter, Lily, and a few of you were asking me, is that really your baby? Because some of you knew her when she lived in my tummy, <laughs> and now she's trying to get taller than me. <laughs> and um, so she's gonna be my sous chef this evening. So tonight, we're kind of going back a little bit. When I first moved here, it spent almost 22 years ago, there was a couple that I met. Um, Kitty and Galen Johnson. Galen, Dr. Galen Johnson used to be a surgeon here and his wife Kitty did a lot of cooking demonstrations and we worked together a lot during the years. And I've had the opportunity, in fact, just this afternoon, Lily and I stopped by to see Kitty and Galen. They're getting older now, so they're not out in the public like they used to be. But um, I've sort of started looking back at some of the old things that we used to do. And this was one of Kitty's favorite soup recipes. I used to love going to her house on Saturday afternoons for lunch. She always set a gorgeous table. And this soup was something that was just kind of a staple in her home. And uh, so I pulled it out to share with you guys because um, what I like about it is that it can be prepared and served as it is. But for those of us who are super busy and don't have a lot of time to cook, you can use this then as a soup one day and something different the next and something different the third. We're gonna talk about that. So easy peasy, you're gonna take a cup of celery, carrots, green pepper, onion, and dump it in a pot. Now, you can spend time measuring out the exact amounts. We don't usually. Um, I just dump vegetables, and sometimes I'll add other vegetables. I might add some mushrooms or other kinds of, you know, uh, hearty vegetables that would make a nice rich broth. For me, if one clove of garlic is good, uh, four or five are better. <laughs> so, and for those of you who've been here, you know that we buy our, our garlic in bulk and I run it through our food processor and I um, put it in ice cube tray and I, I, I freeze it. So when I need garlic, I'll just pop out a cube, a cube of garlic and do it. And we're gonna saute this. Now today, um, I, I had a blonde or gray moment and I poured out the juice of my beans. What I typically do is I cook my own beans, but I didn't tonight. Um, I'll take the juice from the beans and use that to saute the vegetables. I don't have to saute in oil, right? I can saute in the juice from the beans. I can saute in water. And because I absentmindedly poured the water, the, the juice off of this, I'm gonna grab some, some water here. But what you're gonna taste tonight, um, the vegetables were sauteed in the juice from the, the liquid from the, from the beans that we're cooking. And you're just gonna saute that down. Takes about five to six minutes. Now, when I saute vegetables, I do like to saute them in salt, because particularly garlic and onions. The salt brings out the sweetness and the full flavor of that garlic and onions, and you actually can end up using less sodium in the recipe. For example, if a recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt, you could try using a half a teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon by sauteing your vegetables in the salt. It's gonna create a more robust flavor, but then all of these little pieces of vegetables are gonna get a salty flavor to them, right? And they're gonna permeate your, your soup or your sauce or whatever it is that you're making. And you're gonna find that you can use less sodium. It's kind of a cheat. So Lily, if you wanna put the salt in and we'll saute that. There's 
One teaspoon, please, ma'am. Yep. Now, another thing that I sometimes add to this um, recipe is ground ginger. I tend to use ginger in lots of different places. It's not a requirement, but you can. And I like to do it if I have some available. I, I will do my ginger the same way that I do um, my garlic. If I have a lot of ginger on board, I'll take it and um, mince it and freeze it. And then I've got fresh minced ginger whenever I want it. So after this has sauteed, the, those vegetables are, are nice and tender, then I'm going to add the tomatoes and the beans. Now some people go ahead right away and add in their, the rest of their seasonings. I don't, except for the bay leaves. I allow the bay leaves and the liquid and the beans to cook together and I add the rest of my seasonings, the basil and the um, cumin and what's the other one, oregano. I add that a little bit later because otherwise you risk kind of cooking the flavor out of those seasonings I and mean, you don't want to do that, right? So I kind of add those at the, towards the end of my cooking. So once those have sauteed, then I'm going to add my tomatoes. Now, Kitty always used whole tomatoes and would cook those down. If I have whole tomatoes, I'll use them. Um, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I didn't. So what am I using tonight? I'm using crushed tomatoes and I am going to um, use a little bit of water. to. I don't want to waste any of those yummy tomatoes that are still in there. I'm just going to swish the water around a little bit just to get the rest of those tomatoes out. And then I'm going to use a can of kidney beans. Now, I prefer to use dried beans. Um, when, I, when I cook my beans, I wash them really well. I soak them overnight in a whole bunch of water. They'll puff up to double their size. You pour that water off, wash them again, and then put usually that amount of water over top of them, and I cook them in my slow cooker. And I always prepare, cook more beans than I'm, I'm going to use for any particular recipe because I use them. For example, I made a bunch of chickpeas a few days ago, and I had some left over. And so I took what I had left over and I put them in my freezer in one pound little bags. So now if I wanted to make hummus, well, I grab a bag of chickpeas out of my freezer. If I want to make a chickpea loaf, I grab a, a bag of chickpeas out of my freezer. If I want to make curried chickpeas, thank you, out of my freezer they come. And it's the same with kidney beans. Most of your dried beans you can prepare and cook and they freeze really well and then you can use them for other things. We're just going to let that cook down and then at the end, well I didn't add, we had a little bit of leftover pepper from earlier today when we made yours so I'm going to throw that in here. <laughs> um, once all that's cooked down then we're going to add our seasonings. Our bay leaf. Now, I'm a huge fan of bay leaves, so if a recipe calls for one, I'm probably going to add two, maybe three, <laughs> because I really like them a lot. And then the rest of it comes. We'll use a half a teaspoon of oregano and a half a teaspoon of basil. and a half a teaspoon of cumin.
you can go ahead and put those seasonings back in my Trader Joe's bag and you can throw what's throwable away. And I'll just stir that right in. This, you would cook this for probably about 20 minutes. Um, it'll get nice and hot. Those vegetables will get nice and soft. I actually prefer to cook it the day before because those flavors will season and marinate all night and then you can warm it up the next day. It's a great dish to have leftovers of. So tonight, I would enjoy it as a soup. Tomorrow night, I might add some extra garlic, a little coconut, and some Indian spices, and it's curry over brown rice or quinoa or groats. The next day, I may have saved some aside, and I might add some extra basil and some extra beans and some pasta, and suddenly it's pasta visual, right? So you can use it as a base for lots of different things. It also freezes well. So if you made a big pot of it and you had leftovers, well, you could stick the leftovers in your freezer and have it for a later time. And that's why I really like this recipe. It's incredibly simple. There's no right or wrong. You can't mess it up. <laughs> but it's good. It's very tasty. Now, to be honest, at home when I make this, all the vegetables that you saw me put in, I put in. But I usually add a few. Like if I had sweet potato on hand, I'd probably chop up and throw a sweet potato in there. I might have some eggplant uh, sitting on my counter. I'd throw some eggplant in there. You can add to it, but it's a good base recipe um, that you can use to make lots of different things out of, or you can enjoy it as it is. Any questions? All right, you're gonna get your samples after Dr. House talk. Give us just a couple minutes here. You can see how colorful it is. Can y'all see that? See how colorful that is? All those nice rich colors.